be seated. Greetings on behalf of Faith Lutheran and Lorraine's family. For those of you who are gathered and those of you watching via the live stream, I welcome you today. I'm Pastor John here at Faith Lutheran. Uh, we gather here to remember the life of our beloved sister in Christ, Lorraine O'Brien. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. We worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Today we proclaim Christ crucified and risen. We remember before God our sister Lorraine, and we give thanks for her life and commend her to our merciful Redeemer as we comfort each other in our grief. Let us pray. Almighty God, source of all mercy and giver of comfort, graciously tend those who mourn, that casting our sorrows upon you, we may know the consolation of your love through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. This time I'll invite Lorraine's son, Doug, to come forward as he's going to share in plain amazing grace and reading from Psalm 23. Thank you, Doug. Maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the
to invite Linda and Mallory and Ashley and Pastor Carrie to come forward. The reading from John 14, 1 through 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's ha house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm coming there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know. Where are you going? So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Thanks be to God. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Mallory, Lorraine's granddaughter. I'm thankful that you all have traveled safely here today. And I'd like to share memories of her that I treasure. My memories with Lorraine start at a very young age. Since I spent many of my childhood days with her at the country house between Red Wing and Goodyear. As a child, I remember waking up each day looking forward to spending it with my favorite person. As each day was a new adventure, consisting of picking raspberries, learning about gardening, making swans ice cream sundaes with all the sprinkles and toppings that I could have ever asked for, being chased by geese down the driveway, gathering freshly laid chicken eggs, and playing dress up with her clothes, and countless games of checkers or snooping around in her sewing room for little treasures only to be shooed out, and rightfully so, or watching her make her famous staple dish of goulash and her unforgettable gravy. But most of all, my favorite memory of Grandma was that she was present. Each and every day, she appeared to be so busy and seemed never to stop moving. I remember feeling like she did everything with so much ease and grace never really showing her frustration for the mistakes or the energy of a little girl. She always found ways to spend quality time with me and develop my interests. She introduced me to my love for animals, such as Caesar the dog, who escorted me off the school bus at the end of each school day, and my first kitten of 16 years old, of 16, Casey. She allowed me to be creative with arts and crafts and allowed me to dream like little girls should letting me pretend that I could sew, play the piano, and be a nurse. Her talents were many, as she had the ability to see the good in everyone. And at the end of the day, when I was being picked up to go home, she would send me home with an encouraging handwritten note telling me to read it after I left, because I never wanted to leave. Grandma and I continued to make a lifetime of memories, and I am so thankful for her unconditional love kindness and constant support and all the lessons she still teaches me today through her memory. Grandma, you will forever be in our hearts and our minds. Thank you. Today we are gathered to remember Lorraine, my grandma, the wonderful, beautiful, strong, Stubborn, independent, selfless, and loving woman she was. My grandma was the best cook, best seamstress, a great mom, wife, grandma, great grandma, cousin, friend, and sister who will be dearly missed. 
She never missed, missed a special occasion, whether it was a birthday, baptism, birth of children, wedding, confirmation, graduation, and she always was on time and presence for those special moments in her loved one's life. One thing I'll always remember is her stories. Her past was filled with such great memories that she always passed them on to us. A couple weeks before my wedding this summer, I called Grandma to chat. She asked if I was all ready for the big day and asked if my dad knew the time so he would not be late like he was to his. We giggled about it, but every time we connected, she always had a story to tell. I'm going to miss her stories. Looking back at my childhood and all the time I spent with Grandma was some of the best memories on her farm to her house in the cities where our family inherited George the cockatiel bird. And then her and Bill's home in Forest Lake is where we made some everlasting memories. Her pantry was filled with the best candy, strawberry filled hard candies, peanut, br peanut brittle, just to name a few. Her garden, picking raspberries, her homemade ketchup sandwiches with ripple chips, where my mom was wondering where the nutritional value was. <laughs> Cuddling in bed, giggling till we cried to Isle of Lucy and the Golden Girls. Locking my dog in her sewing room because Mallory and I would fight over her. <laughs> Teaching us how to sew, protecting me from her chasing geese, to which I was scared to death of. Pulling us in the red wagon with my dog. Her nails were always manicured to perfection. Her hair was nicely set. Her skin was flawless. To meeting my son, Rylan, and daughter, Kinsley, and watching me get married to my husband, Phil. Lorraine was a strong and independent woman. As she aged, so did her eyesight. But that didn't stop her from doing the things she loved to do. At my wedding, while we were taking family pictures, she was beside me in her wheelchair, holding my hand. On the corner of my dress, there was a ruffle, and here she is, leaning down to make it picture perfect. I noticed what she was doing, and I was like, oh, Grandma, let me help you. I couldn't stop and help but wonder how in the world she'd seen that. But afterwards, it didn't surprise me that she noticed that because even though she couldn't see well, that didn't stop her from making sure everything was perfect and in places just like her. I'm also up here to say a few words for my father, Tom West. As a little boy and now a grown man, my mom just wasn't a mom. She was a mentor. She always told me to treat others the way I wanted to be treated to be kind, gentle, and loving. We have all watched and experienced the things that Ashley mentioned about Lorraine. She left an imprint on us all, especially my little sister, Teresa. I see all of my mom's great qualities in Teresa. She has been such an angel and so loving and caring for our mom, especially during her last years. Mom was so blessed for all that you have done for her, and we all want to thank you for being there for her. We all cherish and hold on to the great memories we have of Mom, and her loving spirit will live through each of us every day. Good afternoon. My name is Kerry Johnson. <clears throat> I uh, pastor a church in uh, Rush City called Restoration Church, and John and Teresa have been my dear friends for, I think, about 15 years now. Um, in that time, I have had the privilege of meeting and spending time uh, with Lorraine on, on various occasions, various situations. I am uh, humbled and honored to be able to stand before you uh, and, and speak. Um, in a limited way, not, not as a family member, but speak of a woman who, who, who loved and was loved, obviously, very dearly. Um, Teresa asked if I would say a few words. It's my privilege to do that, to represent 
her uh, to you all. The last time I saw Lorraine, I was able to speak to her, and uh, she, was, she was in the hospital a little over a year ago uh, in Wyoming. Uh, I had met her several times, a few times anyway, I guess before that, various occasions, and, and each time uh, I, I realized something, I quickly realized something that, that you all already know. Uh, that there's just something about her. There's something about Lorraine that, that so quickly would draw you in. I mean, here I am visiting her in the hospital, and she did everything that she could to keep the spotlight off of her. I'd ask her, how you doing, Lorraine? Is there anything I can get you, anything you need? And, and she said, oh, I'm fine. And then she'd quickly start asking me about me and the church. She had been to our church a couple of different times, and she'd ask about my family. She didn't even know my family, but, but she so quickly wanted to get the spotlight off of her. She wanted no fuss to be made over her whatsoever. Of course, you all, you all know that about Lorraine. That night I spoke with Teresa I was there to, to get some of her thoughts on her mom and, and maybe get to know Lorraine just a little bit better. And that night, Teresa told me that uh, her mom was her best friend, her very best friend. She was the person that she could always go to, she could always count on, um, maybe the only person in the world who would really listen to some of her deepest thoughts and deepest concerns. Teresa told me about this great big hole that's in her right now that her mom could fill. And then what she told me was that that's what mamas do. That's what Teresa said. That's what mamas do. Mamas care about their family. Mamas listen when no one else will. Mamas fill the holes in our lives and invest in their families like no one else can. And, and this mama, Lorraine, that's what she did. She did that, but of course you know that. One of the questions that Teresa had when we talked was, why would God allow her mama to struggle the way she did for so long? Then throughout the course of the conversation, I think that Teresa answered her own, her own question without realizing it, because at one point she said, mamas hang on for their family. I, I think maybe Lorraine hung on just long enough to make sure that her family was ready for her to go, as ready as anybody can be anyway. I think that she knew that some of the people that she loved the most needed more time. Time to come to terms with what was about to happen. Mamas hang on, and Lorraine hung on just long enough, and then she let go. But maybe you knew that too. Teresa spoke of the, the many, many times that she was able to be with her mom right up until the end, kind of tuck her in at night, make sure she had everything that she needed, make sure that the blankets were pulled up tight, and then just as Teresa was about to leave the room, Lorraine would say, lock the door, hon, turn out the lights. And she'd say that every single time. It was kind of like her way of saying, you know, I'm fine, I'll see you tomorrow, I'm still here, and I love you. She'd say it in a way that would make you feel that that Mama's heart was all about loving you. Teresa knew that. Maybe you did too. Another thing I learned about Lorraine in my conversation with Teresa was that she, she lived her life with intentionality. In other words, she lived with a devotion and a purpose that, that may not have been spoken as much as it was modeled. And I, I think the evidence is clear in hearing what I just heard and, and seeing all of you here. You knew how much she loved you. She modeled that for you. You felt that love. You knew what it was like to be loved by her. My, my years with friendship with, with John and, and Teresa, I, I've come to know the boys a little bit, Evan and Johnny. Now you boys know how much your grandma loved you, right? She, she loved you. Um, I'm a grandparent now, and, and I think loving my grandkids is easier than loving my own kids. But, but Lorraine's love was an example for all of her family to follow. And in fact, that, that might be the greatest gift that she was able to give any of you, the gift of how to love and how to be loved. 
but maybe you know that too, and I'm not telling you anything new. I mean, really, all of you know Lorraine much better than I did. Many of you experienced decades, literally decades and decades, of love and devotion and care from Lorraine. And here I am trying to tell you things you already know. But, but here's the thing. Maybe I can tell you something you didn't know. Let me, let me tell you what she wanted you to know today. She wasn't the type to tell too many people about what she needed or what she wanted. She always deferred to everybody else. But I know something she wanted more than anything. And I, and I know this because this is what Teresa told me. But I also know this because I know that this is what God wants. And what he wants and what Lorraine wants more than anything is for you all to be with her in heaven. In, in the presence of God. That's what Lorraine wanted. She wanted you to know that. She wants her family to know that there is hope and that there is life after this one. <clears throat> one of the things that I'll sometimes tell the people in our church um, is, is that this life that we're living right now, even, even though it's a, the only thing we can think about, it's the only thing we can really comprehend, it's the only thing we can imagine, this life that we're living right now is a big deal. It's our, it's our daily reality. But this life, as big as it is right now, is going to be someday like the first day of third grade. How many of you remember your first day of third grade? Maybe some of you do. But someday this is going to be like that. Most of us, for that first day of third grade, for us it was a pretty big deal at the time. There's a new teacher, new friends, old friends you hadn't seen in several months. That day was a pretty big day, that first day of third grade. And this life and everything that's attached to it, all the things that we do, the jobs we have, the people we know, the things we like to do for fun, all that is a really big deal. But someday, this whole life is going to be like the first day of third grade. This life will hardly, hardly be remembered at all. It'll be like that first day of third grade, and, and what we'll have before us is an opportunity to live in eternity, to live in perfection with God and the people we love. And Lorraine wanted you to know that. She, she wants you with her. And the only way that can happen is if you put your trust in Jesus Christ. He is the only one who can forgive your sin. He is the only one who can cleanse you from all the filthiness and unrighteousness that we accumulate in this life. You know, as a pastor speaking to a group like this, there's a very good chance that there are some of you, maybe this is the only time you've been in a church. The only time you'll come to a church, maybe, is, is a wedding or a funeral. And I'm not going to waste this opportunity to tell you the truth. And so what Lorraine wanted today, she wanted the truth to be told, to tell you what she wants her family to know, her loved ones to know more than anything, that there is a life after this life. And unless you receive the grace and forgiveness that only Christ can offer, you will live forever, but it won't be with her. And I can tell you right, right now, this very moment, even if Lorraine was given the opportunity to come back, even if she was granted some opportunity to speak to you again, her response would be, no, I, I'm staying where I am. I'm here in the presence of my Savior, Jesus Christ. And she'd say, I already told them. I told them through my example that I set for them. I modeled the life that points to the next life. My love was my gift. And by extension, Teresa told me that. And so I'm telling you, the only way to see Lorraine again is by trusting in Jesus. And maybe you don't know that, or maybe you don't believe that. But friend, I'm sorry, that doesn't make it any less true. See, Jesus was nailed to a cross, and he died in order to save sinners like me and like you. Then he was raised again to prove that he had the power that he needed over death and sin and Satan. And then in exchange for your sin, he wants to give you his righteousness. He will give you credit for his perfect life. All you have to do is receive it. You can't earn it. You certainly don't deserve it. But he offers it to you freely. And it's called grace. 
When I lost my mom a few years ago, a cousin of mine who had lost his mom, my aunt, just a short time before that, he said, you know, life just isn't as good without a mom. And that's true. Life just is not as good without a mom. For many of you, your life will be much different now. Different without Lorraine, different without mom, different without grandma. But every one of you has an opportunity to see her again. That's what she wanted you to know today. It's up to you to make that decision. We will now hear softly and tenderly. Grace and peace to you, my friends in faith. Softly and tenderly. As he told me, this was the words that were playing as she was taking her last breath. Can we think of a calmer image of moving from this life to the next? Can we think of a more appropriate theme song for that transition from an earthly room to a heavenly dwelling place for her. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling as we remember that beloved smile of Lorraine's. This pandemic has changed many of the ways that we gather and we see each other as we're scattered around a sanctuary today. When I saw your mom on Thursday, it was the first time I'd been able to enter into a nursing home since March. 
Personally, I was grateful to have that opportunity to pray with her, to anoint her head with oil, to prepare her for this journey. And Lorraine wasn't able to talk, but she could blink. And so as we were sharing memories and I was seeing the pictures, like her 90th birthday bash at Walmart, and I was hearing these stories about the generations that came before her that I see in front of me and the, the loved ones in her life. It was interesting what the connection was that brought us here to Faith Lutheran. Why are we here today? And that had to do with some of the deep roots of John and Ida, of aunts and uncles who attended confirmation in this church. Well, it actually wasn't this church. There was, there was another church downtown that burned down. And her memories go back to that. Back by where the railroad station would drop her off in the town. She'd come up from St. Paul and visit. And that church left quite an impression on her. And she left quite an impression on that family and that church. And so I think about how life kind of goes full circle, right? She ended up back at Cherrywood, I mean, right where that train station used to be. And she wanted to come back. And, and we know that feeling. Like, what is it like to go back to something that you have experienced? She wanted to come here. She wanted to come to worship at Faith. And mobility was a problem for her. But she was able to come here. And she, she's probably sitting in one of these pews, like, right here, right at the front, Right? And we had all the kids up here for the children's sermon. And it just so happened that this was a children's sermon where I had some candy for the kids. I gave the kids some candy. And they lit up. They were so excited to get this candy. Probably Tootsie Rolls or something, right? And I told them something. I said, you have to give that candy away. And they looked at me like, are you serious? You just gave me this candy, and now I don't even get to keep it. And I said, look, I want you to take that candy and look around and find somebody who might like that candy and share it with them. So one of those kids found Lorraine and gave that candy to her. And she, in turn, lit up like one of those little kids, excited that she was going to get this candy. I was excited because these kids realized that they had something now that they could give that would actually make somebody else feel this great feeling, this wonderful joy. That glow and that thrill that she must have felt that one of these children found her also sunk in. The kids were taught to give something away without expecting anything in return. Now, don't worry. They had some candy waiting for them once they got back to Sunday school. I'm not that mean, okay? But they didn't know it. It's a lesson in grace. My dad, a pastor, would quote the old Detroit Tigers manager, Sparky Anderson, who would say, grace is getting something you don't deserve based off of Sparky's temper, I'm sure he had a few moments where he got things he didn't deserve. We were talking about candy that day, but this is also how God's grace works for us. God's grace, God's love extends to us through the form of Jesus Christ. And and we heard Pastor Kerry say this. Jesus Christ comes into this world and dwelt among us. Think about that. Jesus didn't come into this world because we had it all figured out. Jesus came into this world because we're a mess. To point to that good and gracious gift of love. And I get it. We don't always understand it. We don't understand what God is up to. We don't always get the why. We've got an abundance of questions. I mean, we heard the reading from John. Like, there are all these questions that we have that we don't get. And Thomas models that really well for us. Thomas... Thomas is right there with Jesus, and he doesn't understand what's about to happen. And yet there's Jesus guiding him along the way. Jesus is pointing, like, I am the way. 
I am the truth. I am the life. Look, it's as simple as following this path. And you're hearing it over and over again, but there's a lot of truth to this, right? Like Lorraine did that for you, didn't she? Like you could see that light in her. She had so much kindness and joy and love and goodness to share. And another image of her was that she was always invested in you, always wanted to know about you, always pushing that limelight, that spotlight away. And so she's on quite a journey. And she's been on quite a journey. But the good news is she never, ever, ever walked alone. There's a verse that comes to mind that, that gives me a lot of hope. And it's when Jesus is kind of put to the test, right? Like, there's people who are threatened by this really amazing message that he has to say. And so he, look, he just kind of looks at them. He's like, look, here, here's the truth, okay? I am the light of the world. Literally, in this world of all of this darkness and, and evil, I'm the light. So whoever follows me, you're never going to walk in darkness again, but you, but you will have me, and I'm the light of life. So here we are. Lorraine, I've called you by name. You are mine. This is a timeless message. This is Isaiah. This is going all the way back. She's been called since the beginning. And here she is. She's never walked in darkness. She's certainly not walking in darkness now. And she has been blessed by the light of heaven, which is shining for her, lighting her way, a model for all of us to see. So softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling, O oh Lorraine, come home. Amen. I invite you to pray with me. Heavenly God, you are a gracious God and we give you thanks because through your death, our Savior Jesus Christ has destroyed the power of death and through his resurrection he has opened the kingdom of heaven. So make us certain that because he lives we shall live also and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come can separate us from the love in Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we join together in the words as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us now commend Lorraine to the mercy of our God, our Maker, and our Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Lorraine. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Lorraine, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. We will now hear how great thou art.
in the name of Christ. Amen. As we will now recess out, I'll invite you as you're on your way out uh, to grab a rose. There's going to be a couple of the, the flower arrangements. You're all invited to grab a rose as you exit the sanctuary or as you exit the, the doors to get outside and we will head out to the cemetery. You're welcome to follow in that recession at this time.